All right, section 6.4, the central limit theory. Now here, what they're talking about is, you remember in previous sections when we took samples of from different pop from one population from different area, we took a the same size sample, and then we take the average of those. So what you have here is, if you take your samples and if the sample size remains the same, and if greater than 30, then when you find the normal distribution for all these samples, normal distribution for all the samples is normally distributed like this, okay? So here in this example, they want to show you that uh, here we have a histogram of 1,392 earthquake. And you see in that case uh, is not, the distribution is not really normal. But when you take a samples of hundreds, when you take a hundred samples and each samples has 50 earthquake result and we graph that, we kind of see a bell shape or a normal distributions. And so, so we, we get a better deal here than taking equal samples of 50 from 100 places or from one place from 100 different area, but as long as the sample is 50, we come up with normal distributions. So what we do here is we just have to remember that the mean remain the same, mean of population doesn't change, but the standard deviation, you have to always take that and divide by radical n. So, but what, so either n is greater than 30 or population is a normal distribution. So if n is not greater than 30, but it's saying the problem that population is normally distributed, then we could use central limit theory. So if you want to use the central limit theory, again, the standard deviation must always be divided by radical n. And here they show the example, they show an example of just uh, when you're finding a problem, if you have just one adult has a weight greater than 148, that's how you see the graph. And this is example of 27 randomly selected adult taken. All right, so now here, I show you some examples. One is this one. Using central limit theory, assume, assume that female has pulse rate that are normally distributed with mean of 74 and a standard deviation of 12.5. So mean of population and standard deviation of population are given. If, number five, if one adult is randomly selected, find the probability that this pulse rate is less than 80. Part B is sick if 16 adults are randomly selected. You know, for part B, you see it's less than 30. However, we stated in the problem that the pulse rate is normally distributed. If you say normally distributed, then it's okay to have N less than 30. So in that case, for, for the first part, again, a standard deviation of population is given, mean of population is given. If one randomly adult is, if one adult is randomly selected, probability of less than 80 is, you know, is easier if you want to use the calculator so you don't have to do the conversion to the Z. So if you want to use a calculator, you have to know the boundary of these two, okay? One boundary is 80 and what's the, what's the first one is always zero because the, the curve that has X, it always starts zero. We don't have any negative part. So to find this area on one end, you put zero, always put zero. 80 is the other end. And then this is the mean and the standard division of populations. So in that case, we have almost 68%. Second part is 
number of adults is 16. So we are taking samples of 16. So in that case, all we need to do is just take the standard deviation and divide by radical n. That's the only difference. And in this case, we get better result. We get 97%. And then here it said, because the original population has a normal distribution, the distribution of sample is a normal distribution for any sample size. They're asking if, you know, what, <clears throat> what is it that we are selecting this one? First of all, you get a good, um, <clears throat> you get a good distribution here. And first, and uh, second of all, the population was normally distributed originally. And that's why the probability is almost 97% here. Then we show you another example here. Again, in these examples, it's um, the weight of certain brand of candy are normally distributed. Again, when you see this statement, it said normally distributed, then for part B, it doesn't matter whether you have n greater than 30 or not, but here uh, and part B, n is greater than 30 anyway. So mean of population is given, standard division of population is given. If one candy is randomly selected, for, find the probability that it weight is more than that number. So the first part is we want to calculate probability of X greater than that. See on the graph, 0 0.8541 is here. So we want to find this area. To find this area, one end is 0.8541. What about the other end? You could always throw a number here, like a hundred. So this is a large number. So, and then X, so that's the boundary of X1 and X2, and then mean and the standard deviation is given. So you put in the problems. Second part is when 464 candies are selected. So in that case, the value of n is 464. So what it does to this formula, we take the standard deviation and divide by radical n. So in that case, we get 58%. This is find the probability if you take sample of 464. So if you just take one sample, problem is this. If you take 464 samples, you get a better problem. And then I'll show you the solution for two of the problems here. Again, very similar to that. All these problems are very similar. See, first we stated that function is normally distributed. Mean of population is standard deviation population is given. When one adult is selected, you just go ahead and use the formula. But if it's more than one, which in this case, it always has to be greater than 30, but again, if it's less than 30 and you want to use the central limit theory, you, it's okay to use it. Why? Because the function is normally distributed. So you either have either or. Either you have normally distributed function or greater than 30. So if it's not greater than 30, it's still little bit. And this is the solution. So if x is less than 78, again, you need two points. On the left, you always use zero. When you come to X, see, and then part B, N is less than four, N is four is less than 30. However, distribution is normally distributed. So in that case, we allow to use central limit theory, which is all we need to do is take a standard deviation divided by radical N. In this problem, number five, X is greater than 171, okay? So you could either calculate these and then subtract it from one, or you could write 171 as your x1 and then for x2 through a large number like 1000. See, I showed it to you here. This is the second way to do it. See, you could either put 177 here and then put a large number like 1000 here on this side, or you could, if, if this is 171, if this is 171, you, between 171 and zero, you find the area, and then since the area in question is this one, you subtract that from one. Okay. 
Okay, so that would be end of this one.